we are going to spend some time exploring pandas in this class pandas is a python library for data analysis it's very similar to how you would use data frames in r for data analysis and allows you to manipulate large complex data sets with ease let's say your objective was to generate some movie recommendations for a user given movies they have already watched and the ratings they gave for those movies one famous data set which has this data is movie lens movie lens is a database of movie ratings by users that was maintained by a department of computer science at the university of minnesota the research lab which maintains this is called group lens you can search for movie lens on google and you will be able to find the page dedicated to the movie lens data sets and you can download it from there so let's quickly run a google search for the movie lens data and we'll go to the web page of the group lens research lab and we'll be able to find some cool data that we can use to analyze what kind of ratings users give movies and use that for other purposes so this is the movie lens page you can see that there are a bunch of different data sets of different sizes there's a 100k data set there is a 1 million 2 million 20 million and so on we'll work with the 100k data set the 100k represents the number of ratings that we are getting so this particular data set has ratings by a bunch of users about 1000 users on about a 1600 or 1500 movies and the total number of ratings is 100000 each row in the data set is a rating given by one user for one movie at a particular date and time so there might be multiple ratings for a movie by a given user then you can check out the readme that comes with this data if you open up the zip file there will be a readme there and the readme will have a lot of details about what kind of data we have in this data set there are a bunch of files which come with the data set and here are the descriptions of each of those that you will find in the readme document the one that we are interested in is u.data this is the complete data set which has 100000 ratings by 943 users on 1682 items this data is such that each user has rated at least 20 movies and it's a tab separated file the columns are user id item id which is an id for the movie the rating that was given and the time stamp then we also have u.item which is information about the movies themselves you dot user has information about the user like age gender occupation and so on and then there are a bunch of train and test data sets this is the main u dot data set broken up into smaller data sets so you can run cross validation on them for our purposes we are just interested in two files the first is called u dot data this has the user id the movie id the rating and the time stamp that the rating was given we'll also look at the u dot item file which has the movie related info it has a bunch of info like the title of the movie the video release date the imdb url the genre of the movie and so on for now we'll just concentrate on the title of the movie so that when we are manipulating our user rating data we can just see which movies the ratings are corresponding to pandas as we mentioned before is a python library for data analysis and it's inspired by r so in r when you manipulate data you put your data in an object called a data frame pandas also has a data frame object where you can put your data into rows and columns by reading it from a csv then you can write that data frame back to a csv 
you can manipulate this data frame into different shapes you can subset the data based on conditions you can even create data frames as a combination of numpy arrays or other data frames we will start by creating a data frame which will read the data from the movie lens data file so here we have the path of the data file on my machine and then we'll use pd.readcsv to read this file into a variable called data the data will be a data frame object so pd.readcsv takes in the path of the file the delimiter or the character that separates the columns then it will by default assume that the first row is the header so if you had just stop there with only specifying the tab delimiter it would take the first row of your csv as a header in our case there is no header in our file so we want to explicitly pass in a header we are saying that the header in the file is none and that the names of the columns are in this array that we are passing in so this line will read the data file it will treat it as a tab delimited file and it will assume that there is no header which is in the file itself it will create a data frame object whose column names will be the list of names that we have just passed in into this function and whose rows will be indexed from 0 onwards now in case your file had a column the first column which is acting like a serial number pandas can automatically detect that and use that as the row index you can explicitly avoid that and we'll show you how to do that in another example so if the first column is a serial number then it will be automatically used as a row index otherwise it will just create an index for itself and index the rows from 0 onwards So the result of this was that a pandas data frame object was created and there are many many complex and interesting ways in which you can index this data frame object. You can reference the columns, you can reference the rows, you can reference it using a condition and you can manipulate it and subset it in multiple ways. Let's just take a look at the first few rows in the data frame head is a function that will print the first few rows of any data frame generally the top five rows so data dot head will show us the first five rows in our data set so here you can see a data frame object it has data arranged in rows and columns the row index is shown in bold and you can so see that it starts from zero the column names are also in bold and they are the column names that we passed in. So let's look at the first row, the row index 0. The user ID is 196. The item ID or the movie ID is 242. The rating for item 242 by user 196 is 3. And the timestamp is given in the Unix format so this is the number of milliseconds from a specific start point our data frame will actually have a hundred thousand rows because that's the number of ratings we have each of them will have this user id item id a rating and the time stamp that that rating was created let's read another file this time we'll use the u.item file which is the movie info file it has a bunch of data like the movie title the genre the release date and so on here's the path of that file on my machine it's the file named u.item then we'll use pd.readcsv again to read this into a data frame called movie info the pd.readcsv will take in the movie info file which is the path of that file the delimiter which in this case is a pipe we are specifying that there is no header in the file header equals none 
then we are also specifying that don't use any of the columns in the file as an index because the first column in our file is a serial number it's the movie id we don't want that to be used as an index we've also passed in the list of columns that we actually want to use we don't want to use all the columns we only want to use the first and second columns this is specified in the use calls argument the names of those columns are passed in using the array names notice the index call equals false this is us explicitly specifying that don't use any of the columns in the csv file or in this case the pipe separator file as a row index if that column is used as a row index then its values won't be accessible for manipulation it will be used as an index so to avoid that we are explicitly specifying that index calls equals none all right now we can take a look at the top few rows of movie info and there you have it it has only two columns even though the file that we were reading had over 20 plus columns this we did by specifying the columns to read in use calls it also has an index starting from 0 remember that we use the index call equals false if you are not explicitly done this then the item id column would have been by default taken as the row index and you would see that bolded and you would have only one column in the data frame by saying index calls equals false explicitly we are making sure that both the columns that we read are in the data frame as values and there is a separate row index that is created which starts from zero we can merge these two tables by using the pd.merge function by using that function we can combine these two tables so that the title column is added to our original data frame which has the ratings data so pd.merge will combine the data frames data and movie info and will do that by matching them on the column item id from data and item id from movie info so left on specifies the column from the left data frame that we should match on right on specifies the column from the right data frame that we should match on the result will be that one new column called title will get added to our left data frame this is because we are taking the merged data frame and putting it back into the variable data this line of code that we have written is very much like an sql join we are specifying the columns to be joined on in the left on and right on arguments let's see if that worked data dot head should show us that the column title has now been added to the ratings data let's now quickly see how we can index values in this data frame so the first thing we'll see is how we can get one column out or a set of columns out from this data frame the data dot user id will give us a panda series object which is this just the column user id data and user id in square brackets will give us a pandas data frame which has the column user id and you can actually pass in a list of columns over there to see a subset of the data frame with multiple columns so both of these are essentially the same except that one gives you a panda series object which is just like one column of data and the other gives you a pandas data frame which is like data arranged in rows and columns lock is a function that you would use heavily because it allows you to index any list of columns or any list of rows so you would pass in a list of rows and a list of columns to the lock function and it will fetch you only those 
specified rows and columns of the original data frame. The other thing that log does is that the index in the new data frame that is created will be exactly the same as the original data frame. So let's say you had actually subsetted or using log got the first, third and fifth row of the original data frame. In the new data frame, the row index will say 135 instead of 123. So here's an example where we are fetching the first 11 rows and the column user ID from the data frame data. And you can see the result. It's the first 11 rows of the column user ID. You could also use a condition to say, get me the all the values in a particular column which satisfy a specified condition. For example, you can say, from data, give me the subset of rows where the title is Toy Story. So this will give us a subset data frame with only the users who have rated Toy Story and their ratings. Let's just name that data frame Toy Story users and look at the head or the first few rows of that. You will see that all the movies titles will be only the Toy Story. 